Well, yeah, because if if people will invest you, if they like you, know you, and trust you, kind of thing. So if if all they think is I don't want to talk because they're going to keep pitching me the next product or service. It's not going to work. And even to try to come up with something custom for it, just because if that's not what you normally do, and then you say, yeah, we can definitely do that. And then after you sell it, climb the deal, you have to find someone, okay, we, we have a new problem now. So our product line is this, but we need to add something else just because for this particular client, you know, it's one of those things that, well, why would you do that? You know, focus on really rolling out your product or service in the most efficient way possible versus if everything is custom to that effect, that every single client is every single custom thing, you're just going to, you're going to spin your wheels and you're just going to burn totally. it really out because then you're, you're not going to have any stability, right? So next question I want to find is that, so a lot of people, when they do startups, you know, they're, they're thinking, all right, they just want to start their company and start, you know, selling the product or service, whatever, but they don't really have an idea of culture. So in your, in your, in your opinion, Joseph, what are the keys to defining and scaling a successful startup culture? Oh, it's such a great question because, uh, I, you'll pr you've probably seen this. Like, I find this every few years, some CEO writes a blog post, something along the lines of like, you can't create culture, culture happens or culture emerges. And, and when I see those, it, it tells me that that CEO never took culture seriously. And now they've got a, a hot mess that they're trying to get their arms wrapped around. Because I disagree vehemently. You can absolutely define and create culture. Um, the hard part is starting early and starting with the right open mind. Um, one of the things we've done with every company that we've launched right at the get-go is we wrote down the artifacts. Sometimes it was a set of policies. Sometimes it was a simple statement. Sometimes it was a list of rules. I was like, what is the culture we want to create? Not who are we, what do we stand for, but what is the culture that we hope to create? Uh, and if you write those down on day one, A, you've got a bit of an early start to aim for. And you've got, you know, the articulation of, you know, what you hope to become. Number two, you've got this clear gap. You, know, you say, hey, this is what I want to be. It's really easy to look back at yourself now and say, hey, am I living up to that? And if you're consistently saying, hey, here's where I want to be. Here's where I am. You will bring those closer. It's like what measure gets done. You got to have that end goal from day one to move in the right direction. Um, but last but not least, you're giving every team member you bring on board the flag they can wave. The issue is if you don't write it down, they're going to just pick up a flag and wave it. If you're a startup that raised a bunch of money, that flag might be something like the free lunches you provide. Like, I'm sorry, your lunch might be really great, but that's not a good sign of culture. Um, if you're a bootstrap, you're doing it as a side hustle. So you're doing your work over beers in the evening. If you don't actually write down the culture, the flag they'll pick up is like beers in the evening is how we work. And Again, maybe I like, I like a beer in the evening. That's not necessarily a good hallmark of the culture. Yeah. Yeah. But so yeah. write it down in a shareable way and then empower everybody to be that flag bearer of your culture. We, I think that brings up a really good point. I remember one of my previous podcasts, one of them says, uh, one of my, one of my guests actually was talking about, you know, you'd be surprised because I think a lot of owners like to try to do things themselves, especially when they're starting out and mm -hmm. when they start bringing people on board, you know, it's like, okay, I'm just going to kind of manage them or anything, but and they, they almost kind of get in, get in the own company's way, if, if you know what I mean. So that the, the people you hire, if they believe in that vision, in that culture, they can maybe take what you had an idea and just make it 10x better, right? Just so because much. they're they're following you and they're loyal to you. So, you know, really think about that, right? Don't just try to hold everything close to your chest, right? Because you're afraid of, oh, this person's going to mess up and I can't trust anybody but myself. But really relying on your people and really trusting your judgment and really understanding it as well is really good. So so a little question about this. So I hear this question a lot where it comes to, all right, should I focus on scaling up or should I really focus on, you know, maximizing my sales? Can you do both? Or what would you do if you're, if you're a new startup? What do you think should be the focus? Uh, I think the, the right way to think about it is that every great startup, every great company really is a two engine plane, it's like building the product or the service that you're selling and then selling it. Uh, if you don't have both engines running, that plane can't fly. Maybe you can get by, you can glide, it can land safely, maybe. But if you really want to soar, you need both of those engines going. So I would always start with that selling and that customer side of things because when you start a company, the part that's so hard, I, and I say this having fallen into this trap multiple times, when you first start a company, you've got an idea of the problem you solve and the way to solve it, but you're wrong. 
I've been wrong every single time. And the way my customers use my product is different than what I expected. The problem it solves is different. The, the, the right solution is different. So you have to change features. So your job is you got to shorten that learning time. And you do that by selling, by going and talking to customers. You know, what's your problem? Here's how I think I can solve it. Is that good? And all of those are invaluable data points and you'll just move faster. Wow, that's interesting to hear. So, so you've been, so Navarro, like Navarro is how old right now? Like you guys have been around? Uh, two and a half years. Two and a half years. And how big are, how big is your team that you have working on it right now? I mean, as much yeah. as you'd like to say that Joseph is running everything, I'm sure he has some help. Yeah. So we are 60 people full time. Uh, and on top of that, our instructors and our coaches are uh, a network of contractors. And there's about another 20 or so 